Hello and welcome to this week's Lab at Home vlog. I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that this is a pretty nerdy video blog because I got something to work this week that I'm really excited about and I wanted to share it with you and hopefully you will find it interesting too. So if you are familiar with DNA extractions and PCRs and that anticipation of running your gel and seeing if there's any bands that indicate your extraction or your PCR has been successful, then this probably is the video blog for you. So just to give you a little bit of background, this has been a continuation of the troubleshooting on our avian sexing protocols. But please don't switch off right now because bird sexing doesn't interest you. I promise you that this is more about molecular biology nerding out than bird sexing. So bear with me. Um, basically, the stars aligned this week and I was able to get freshly plucked feathers sent to us by a parrot breeder very kindly. Um, there you go, two lovely feathers. And a blood spot on a piece of filter paper. So that was exciting because with the double lot of feathers and a large blood spot, I was able to do DNA extractions using both the Proteinase K kit. It has the lysis buffer, the resin, the Proteinase K and the DTT. And DNA extractions using our Hotshot DNA extraction kit. And basically I wanted to compare the two methods and see which was more successful at extracting DNA from feathers and from blood. So now I'm going to show you a series of gel pictures from what happened when I ran those DNA extractions using a PCR program that I already know to work very well for amplifying parrot DNA and sexing um, parrots. And I will talk you through the outcome Okay, I'm just going to talk you through the labelling of this gel before I talk you through the results. The top row is the DNA extractions using the Proteinase K kit and the bottom row is the DNA extractions using the Hotshot kit. And all of these samples were run through a PCR programme that I know works for parrot sexing. When the feathers and blood spots arrived, they were labelled as being from parrots A, B, C, D and E, and uh, F uh, refers to feathers, B refers to blood spot. So apologies for the way that I've loaded this gel, just to keep you on your toes. Um, on the top row, I've kept all of the A's together, the B's, etc. Whereas in the second row, I've put all the feathers and then all the blood spots. So on the top row, you can see that the Proteinase K kit has successfully amplified DNA from uh, the feathers belonging to parrot B, D and E. And the Hotshot kit has successfully amplified uh, from parrots B, C and D, just the feathers and nothing from the blood. So I then loaded those six amplicons onto a 3% gel and ran it for an hour and a half because this allows the resolution of the bands to be able to sex the bird that the DNA extraction comes from. So uh, P now refers to the proteinase K and H to the hot shot. There's two lovely bands um, for um, feather from bird B which shows that this is female, two lovely bands from uh, D's feather which shows it's female but a single band from E's feather so this one was male. Whereas, <laughs> obviously, we'd expect that to be female. Uh, that one's unknown. And that one we'd expect to be female as well. But the um, amplification from the hotshot DNA extractions is too weak to actually be able to see that. There could well be a second band in there. But as we can see here, that the second band is always fainter than the top one. That could be happening here, and it's just too faint to see. So, not the best result I have to say. Then remembering back to last week's vlog I found that my PCRs worked in the morning but not in the afternoon and a little bit of investigating found that in the morning I had just taken those DNA extractions out of the freezer and they'd only partially thawed so I was pipetting off the um, 
DNA from the top of the PCR tube to use in the PCR. Whereas by the afternoon, the DNA had completely thawed and I was mixing the tube up and using that as my DNA sample for the PCR. And what happened is that mixing the DNA extraction resulted in PCR inhibition. So I wasn't getting any bands in the second PCR of the day, the afternoon PCR. So what I decided to do after getting this slightly disappointing result was to prepare one in 10 dilutions of my concentrated DNA extractions, all of these ones here, into water, and then to freeze both the concentrate and the one in 10. And to set up the PCR again, using exactly the same PCR program, same part, master mix, everything, but in the morning when my sample had only partially thawed to see what happened. So here we have the results from the proteinase K DNA extractions. So P now refers to uh, proteinase K again. Um, point one is the one in 10 dilution and this one's the concentrate. So I'm really uh, <laughs> getting the brain cells working here. I really hope you are following me. But basically on the 1.5% gel uh, run for half an hour, you can see it was far more successful, predominantly from the one in 10 dilutions here, but also some from blood samples, which uh, on the previous gel, I didn't have any successful um, blood sample extra uh, amplification. Whoops. So then I took those rows and ran them separately on 3% gels for an hour and a half to see if I could sex those birds. So here you can see that bird A is very much female. You can see those lovely double bands there. Bird B in both the feather and the blood is definitely female. C I called as a male. And then the second row of samples C confirmed as male from the blood spots, previously the feather. Uh, lovely two bands. The gels do show up nicer on my phone, I have to say, and on my laptop than in these printouts. So uh, if you're like, oh, Jen, are you sure that that's a lovely result? I promise you it, it is and that these photos don't do it justice. So D was a female and then single band for E to show it as male. So I was really chuffed with that, actually. So for due diligence, because um, I did this for the proteinase K extractions, I also did them for the hot shot extractions. So again, just to remind you, I had the concentrate, the one in 10 dilutions, I put them all in the freezer, and then the next day set up a PCR using partially thawed samples and pipetted off the top. And this is what it looked like. So this time I put all of the feather samples on the top row and all of the blood samples on the bottom row. And I think this possibly is one of the most striking gels I've ever seen <laughs> because after overnight storage and a freeze thaw, there was basically no amplification from the concentrated samples, which are these ones here. And yet look at those bands from the one in 10 dilutions. Absolutely incredible and mind boggling. And it makes me think back to other protocols that I have been troubleshooting, where I've had these negative bands and I've assumed that the DNA extraction has been unsuccessful or that there's a problem with my PCR program. And now I'm thinking, hmm, what if I had just done one in 10 dilutions in water stuck them in the freezer and then only pipetted off the top of the sample. Could it be that there was this beautiful DNA and I wasn't detecting it because of inhibition? So the next one uh, I'm not quite so proud of because I wanted to see the results from these and uh, I am out of DNA ladder, so don't judge me. Here is a gel with outer DNA ladder again. Um, these do look really neat to me. They may not show up so well for you, um, but A was female, B was also female, C was male, D was female, and E was male. 
and I've got the results from the um, proteinase K kit here. So you can see um, female A, female B, male C, female D and male E. So I am absolutely chuffed to be able to say that using two different DNA extraction methods from feathers and bloods, I was able to get um, actually 100% um, extraction success and that the results agreed. So I'm going to go back to the parrot breeder that kindly supplied us with those feathers and blood spots and be able to tell him <laughs> with 100% confidence that our protocol has been able to sex his birds. And uh, hopefully it will match the uh, sex that he has recorded for those parrots. Um, but I'm confident that they will. Okay, I realised that was quite a whistle-stop tour through a week's worth of work. I really hoped you um, followed what I was saying as I talked you through those gel pictures. But you do, if you do have any questions, please ask them below on this video and I will get back to you with some better explanations. Basically, the key message of this video blog was that once I might have looked at that first gel picture that I showed you and thought, ah, okay, neither of those DNA extraction kits have particularly worked well for the feathers or at all for the blood spots. So back to the drawing board. However, based on the prior knowledge I had from last week's troubleshooting, that's why I set up the 1 in 10 dilutions and put them in the freezer uh, before setting up the PCR. And you can see what amazing results that produced from running exactly the same PCR program, but without any PCR inhibition. So now I'm going to go and modify our protocols so that our customers can benefit from that troubleshooting and hopefully experience the same 100% reliability of DNA extractions that I have with those kits. So I do hope you have found that interesting to watch and thank you very much for listening.